So it's Halloween season again. Yep. And you want to be relevant, right? Yep. So it's time to do a Halloween themed video then? Well, no. Why no? Because I want it to be relevant, right? Right. So you want the video to be applicable all year round. So you can't go too hard on Halloween because then at other times of the year people will be like, guess que say? Quite is going on. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm going for a loosely Halloween energy video, but just with like a gentle nod to Halloween. Like mentioning it in the intro. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Perfect. Yeah? The big reveal doesn't quite work, mate, when you put it in the thumbnail. Thank you to Nebula for sponsoring this video. You can catch all my videos ad-free there, plus some new exclusive content, but more on that later. Morning everyone, I'm Soph, these are my notes, and I fancied doing like a silly video, kind of in the style of my rating planets on Party Potential, uh, one from ages ago. So here we are. Today I'm going to be ranking your body's fear responses. These are my opinions, my reasoning may vary, and it's important to say this is all just a little bit of fun. The ranking system categories are going to be like this. Top tier is Monster Mash, because that song is simply a banger. A banger and mash. Then going down we have Smashing, pumpkins. Solid, unlike ectoplasm, that's my weakest one, <laughs> I will admit. Frank and Fine, and then the Rocky Horror Picture No, also briefly titled Hocus Bogus. This whole thing also gives me an excuse to put wolf makeup on, which I just think is superior to normal makeup, but this is the kind of contouring I can get behind. Seasonally, I also feel a little bit like death warmed up. <laughs> it is the season for infection, and if this seems like a bit of a fever dream, it is because it kind of is all right, let's get into it. So, when you get scared, like upon seeing a vampire or a ghost or a sexy cat, your fight or flight system kicks in. Adrenaline is released, courses through your body, and it preps you to either fight or run away, and in doing so leads to various physical side effects. The first one of those is our first fear response, and it is that your breathing rate increases. This is a solid response to start. It increases oxygen intake to your body, so your body has more of it to use for energy release, aka respiration. Increasing your breathing rate gets your lungs going, your alveoli are playing their part, and who doesn't love a bit of oxygen? It also makes me think of the song She-Wolf by Shakira. Era. You know the bit where it's like, let her out so she can breathe. <laughs> Which is timely and topical. <laughs> Breathing rate increase, you go straight to smashing. For similar reasons to above, your heart rate also increases when you get scared. Your heart pumping quicker means that blood gets around your body, those nutrients and oxygen gets to your cells, again prepping for them to do some sexy respiration, which will mean they will have the energy to save your life. This is another strong response, one for those who love to track their heart rate. It's also going in smashing. While we're in the blood, swimming in that plasma stream, maybe this one if that's your your prerogative. The next response is that the blood vessels around the edges of your body, which we more colloquially call skin, these blood vessels contract which limits the flow of blood to your skin and makes you look pale. Meanwhile, blood vessels in central areas around like your vital organs open or dilate and flood those vital organs with sweet sweet blood. Also blood gets sent to your like arm muscles and your leg muscles so again you could punch or run away. So redirecting your blood in this way is how your body prioritises what matters in that moment of fear. This is the middle management of the fear responses. It's the Trello, the Asana, the Monday. Let's put the skin in the Kanban for now and focus on the heart in this sprint, chaps. I think I might have got that compact Kanban thing completely wrong, but anyway. It's the most, I'm trying to make a corporate joke, guys. Trying to expand my audience. Anyway, middle management, middle tier. It's solid. But this blood redirection isn't just away from your skin. Another place that gets demoted is the stomach because you're not gonna need to be doing any digesting at a time like this. This blood movement away from your tum makes us feel a bit nauseous, but in a less intense environment, we call this sensation feeling butterflies. Now I've made a video on this in the past and you may not have seen it because I recently changed the thumbnail from this monstrosity. And who would click on that? <laughs> I'll link it somewhere, you can watch it if you want, but basically in that I explain why we get butterflies. But going back to butterflies and fear, maybe the like butterflies aspect of fear is why people think that they fall in love with like vampires and whoever, whatever, you know, so on. Bella was getting fear butterflies confused with romance butterflies, Bella Swan, what are you doing? It's basically blood-based Stockholm Syndrome. So I'm not sure that a fuzzy tummy is a great reaction to fear, but in other circumstances it can be a cute little feeling. So butterflies, I'm gonna put them in frank and fine. So we're gonna get rid of the butterfly 
And then we're just on to our eyes. What a smooth segue to talking about pupil dilation. This is where your pupils get wide and make you look like puss in boots on a night in Berlin. The reason this happens is because the wider your eyes, the more light you can take in and you can kind of get as much visual information as possible and so have a greater awareness of kind of the threats that are around you. Rocky Horror Picture, no thanks though. Ignorance is bliss, even when I'm at risk. Next. That was threatening, sorry, I don't know why I did that. Next. Let's talk hyperfocus. <laughs> so in a scary situation, your vision may be taking more in, but your mental focus is often very much directed at a specific thing. Specifically, that specific thing is specifically how you're going to survive. This is often called weapon focus in the eyewitness memory field because it's a big issue for criminal cases. If you're being robbed at gunpoint, your focus is gonna be on the gun, not the dress of the perpetrator or what their face looked like. So yeah, it can make recollecting details from an event a bit of a problem. Weapon focus or hyperfocus are both quite cool names. They've got big mindfulness energy, you know, like just focus on the raisin vibes, but they can be a bit of a pain when it comes to justice. I'm gonna rank this as solid unlike ectoplasm. <laughs> Next up is one that is familiar to us all, piloerections. AKA goosebumps. Piloerections is like the Reginald Dwight to Goosebumps' Elton John. So basically what's happening here is when your muscles tense up, the tightening of the muscles at the base of each hair makes the hair stand on end. And goosebumps are great for warming us up when we're cold, but what is their point? in a fear context. Are they just a side effect of adrenaline without a use of their own? Well, one theory is that, obviously if you've got a hairy animal and all of its hair stands on end, then that is gonna make it look bigger and more formidable. Now, I'm not sure when I'm in my normal human state that this would have the intended consequence. I feel like, I'm just picturing my like little mustache just like sticking out like. <laughs> that might scare a murder off though, to be honest, potentially can give it a go. Well, I don't want to give it a go. I feel like this is quite a fun little evolutionary hang up and it shares its name with a beloved children's creepy book series. Monster Mash tier, you deserve it. Sweating, next one, falls into a similar category to Goosebumps in that it could just be a less useful side effect sibling of adrenaline. Does it have any benefits? in and of itself. Well, yes, it could help us cool down during all that fighting or fleeing that we're doing. But another suggestion for its usefulness is that smelling someone else's scared sweat makes us more primed for the threat. It's like a domino fear effect. That was poetry. Now, potentially one way that we can tell the difference is because fear or nervous sweat has a different chemical composition to normal sweat. And that's one of the reasons that it smells worse when bacteria break down those specific compounds. But again, that's a different video, which I have made. Now, I personally am a fan of smell and using smell to suss things out. I've made also another video on it related to my girlfriend smelling when I'm ill. So yes, I'm a fan of sweat and smelling. It's going in smashing. All right, next up, you might think that when you're scared, you'll cry, a la screaming, crying, throwing up. But actually, when you're scared, tear production is inhibited, as is saliva production. So that's why when you're scared, your mouth goes dry. A dry mouth is also a cause of bad breath. And so the fear response of being dry is going into Rocky Horror Picture Now. If we're talking about fears, having bad breath is genuinely a big fear of mine. <laughs> this would be me before I was about to get murdered. So no, thank you. But while we're on the topic, let's go back to the head honcho of the screaming, crying, throwing up Trinity. A big question I had going into this video is what is the point of screaming? So I found a study with this excellent name. It's called Human Screams Occupy a Privileged Niche in the Communication Soundscape, which I'm like, why is the scream giving me dark academia vibes here? <laughs> But anyway, this study analyzes screams to work out what makes them unique. And the researchers came up with this attribute of roughness. Roughness, in a sound sense, is how fast a sound changes in loudness. So screams are very rough because they show a lot of variation. Loud to quiet to loud to quiet to loud to quiet. Like, ah, ah, ah I guess. <laughs> That wasn't fun to try, I just thought I'd give it a crack. But it's not just human screams, animal screams are also rough, as are alarm systems. I guess like, wee, wee, I just, I'm stop, I need to stop trying to do rough noise impressions. The rougher the noise, the scarier it is perceived. 
why? Normally, when you hear a sound, the first step in the brain is you trying to make sense of it. So if it's someone speaking, it's like, what can I determine about this speaker? But the theory here is that screams don't follow that route. Instead, they go straight to activating the fear circuitry in your brain. And it's thought that it's the roughness of the screams that trigger that shortcut. So a bit like the smell of sweat, it seems that the sound of screams spread the word of something being up. They can alert other people to danger both audibly and neurobiologically too. Discovering this or reading about this was a big time learning moment for me. Plus screaming is an iconic fear response. It's potentially the poster child for being scared. Guys, it's gotta go in Monster Mash. Three for three, screaming, crying, throwing up. Let's dip our toes into throwing up. There seem to be lots of explanations for why you might throw up when you're scared. Like I said, that nauseous feeling seems to be linked to the same blood redirection uh, mechanism as butterflies. In terms of ranking, I mean, vom might put off someone who's threatening you, it might confuse them, but I do think when you're scared, you kind of have enough to be dealing with. Yeah, it's gonna go in frank and fine. Okay team, it's time to address l'elephant dans la pièce. I mentioned fight or flight. But in more recent years, this double act who we have come to know and love has had an additional member added. It's freeze. Fight or flight or freeze. Everybody clap your hands. Fight or flight are kind of two sides of the same coin. You have the same bodily responses priming you for either thing. Freeze is more like a different coin. The opposite coin, I guess. Basically, for example, in it, instead of seeing heart rate speed up, we see heart rate slow down. What's happening? What's happening? Why? What's happening? <laughs> well, not tons is known about freeze. The main thought is that it acts as like a step between experiencing something stressful and taking action. So it's known as an active action preparatory state, or also known as attentive immobility. It's like you can't move, but you're still paying attention. So while you're frozen, the sensory information is being taken in and the cerebellum is being chatted to to coordinate your next movement. So freeze is just a chance to think about your next move. I make my move, then you're free to check the king. No, Ron, no! So freeze is there to make sure you don't do anything rash. An example is if you're on high alert, you're a bit scared, and someone jumps out at you, if you swing a punch them right away, you might not realise that they're your friend playing a silly jape, or that they're a robot, and punching them may hurt your hand. So go on then, freeze. I'll put you in solid, because I think... That's what you are, and it's what you become when you're frozen. Coming up to the home stretch now, lads, and let's start looking inwards. The next response I'm gonna talk about is the increased production of white blood cells. Now, white blood cells are quite often depicted as like warriors or security guards, and I know it's naughty, but I do love a little bit of anthropomorphization. Like picturing these little blobs coming to your aid when you got Freddy Cougar running after you. It might sound ridiculous, but it does make sense. Like, yes, you're not gonna get ill from a vampire's coffin, <laughs> but if you get bitten by a vampire, you're probably gonna have an infection to deal with. One that your white blood cells are gonna have to fight against. Same with a tiger. If a tiger slashes you, you're gonna get an inf you could get an infection. I like this one. I think it's fun that your whole body gets involved and this belief that even at a small scale, we can all make a difference. Every little helps. It's going in monster mash. I will just say quickly that because increased white blood cells are linked to stress responses, when we're experiencing chronic stress that's setting them off all the time, it can lead to inflammation, which isn't great. So white blood cells are top tier in the short term, but less so in the long term. All right, hold it in, Captain. We're nearly there. I know what you want to ask. What about peeing yourself? Well, the reason for why we pee ourselves when we're scared is still pretty up in the air, but it is very common in the animal kingdom too. Physiologically, it could be because your muscles are tensed, which puts more pressure on your bladder, or it could be that some of the substances that are released at the time of stress make your bladder contract or squeeze. There's also some chat that the fear-activated brain areas override the signals that would normally make us control ourselves urinary wise but whatever the mechanism is peeing yourself when you're scared useful or is it just a soggy side effect of other superior responses is it to mark territory is it to put off a pursuing predator is it to reduce your weight to aid the next step of whatever you need to do i don't know the answers aren't clear and i can't judge what i don't know so peeing yourself is currently frank and fine and whilst we're here, on the loo, or not on the loo, adrenaline, for some reason, seems to relax your external anal sphincter, or, take it away past Soph, aka the AS. <laughs> That's a really stupid joke. So stupid that I did a callback. That's a reason why nervous poos are a thing, and why you may poo yourself when you're scared. 
This feels bad. Rocky Horror Picture No. Now I've talked a lot today about fear, but not about what really scares me. So let me share with you something that I saw the other day um, that's like something from a creepy book. It's this published paper titled Why Homosexuality is Abnormal by Michael Levin, or Levin. If you're watching this at Halloween and seeking a costume, then hey, why not dress up as this? Now I actually, inspired by seeing this paper, made a video where I go through the paper, have a little chat about it, and basically take the piss. Again, I would say that gays have chosen a higher purpose. It's called walking quickly and dressing well. Sounds like he has a taste for humiliation, because boy, this paper is embarrassing. It was a lot of fun to make, but it is a bit not safe for work, NSFW, and would definitely get demonetized on YouTube. So the video has found its home on Nebula. Okay, so you may have heard of Nebula before, and if so, don't worry, I'll be quick, but if you haven't, then hey, welcome. Here's the lowdown. So Nebula is a streaming service, like Netflix, but it's specifically for thoughtful, educational, and simultaneously entertaining stuff. There are loads of us creators on there posting our YouTube videos, sponsor and ad free. I always post my videos to Nebula before they go up on YouTube, and the ending is always a little bit different to the YouTube version. But importantly, Nebula is not just a YouTube clone. It's full of exclusive content that is made for only there because it is a great space for creators to try new things without sort of worrying about being punished by the YouTube algorithm for doing so. Personally, I use it as a place to make stuff that would get big time demonetized here. So my reaction to this is actually my second in a little side series called Soph's Paper Club, where I go through papers that I can't believe have got published or that I just want to chat about. My first one was about a guy who used masturbation as a scientific method. See? Demonetizable. <laughs> and now there are also Nebula classes that you can't catch anywhere else. And you can learn all sorts from these, from how to be ready for your dream job, to how to make a movie, to how to sue like a lawyer, should you need that. There's so much on there, I hadn't quite realised how much until recently, and I went down a big old rabbit hole. So the classes are really worth checking out, I can recommend them. And there are also Nebula podcasts, like mine and Simon Clark's new series. And beyond that banquet of content that you'll have access to, signing up to Nebula using my link really helps to support this channel. To be honest, I am so chuffed to even be on Nebula amongst so many other fantastic creators. And I really appreciate that Nebula are willing to sponsor me and to help me continue to try and make this YouTube thing my full-time job. And by signing up to Nebula using my link, you can help me to do that too. I really appreciate any support. Honestly, as I've said before, I like keep a little beady eye on my analytics page and every time the number of signups with my code goes up, I get so excited. It's such a thrill for a small town gal like me. So if any of this sounds appealing, then you can sign up to Nebula using my link to get 40% off an annual subscription. That's $30 or about £25 for a whole year's worth of stuff. That link is go.nebula.tv forward slash Soph's notes and it's in my description. Thanks again for all your support and for getting this far and if you do watch my video on abnormal homosexuality ramblings then please let me know what you think. <laughs> please do like this video if you like it, share it if you share it, subscribe if you subscribe it and comment with how you think the fear responses should be ranked or just give me your favourite. Tell me what you dress up as for Halloween. Are you a wolf girl like me? Otherwise, all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day, and remember, this is only lightly Halloween themed for this video, so recommend it to all your friends, all year round. I guess I should say, all year around. <laughs> Thank you, my lovely patrons. You are all the absolute best. And hello there, Puzlius and Drove. Hello, hello, hello. You say goodbye, I say hello. Accidentally in rhyme. Do, 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 do. Okay. So forceful. Piece of rubbish. You know those people who have tattoos of like their spine, but like on their throat? It looks like I've tried to do that. It's not a look. It's not a look. Did you like lads? Did you like that? I liked it. Well, the jokes in this video have me absolutely howling. <laughs> oh, Celeste is home. I'm gonna go howl at her. Oh! Welcome to the end screen. I was absolutely gobsmacked at how many people commented on the last video being like, I know what a bramble is, or I got to the end screen, bramble. Thank you, people who get here. Thank you so much. Well, you know the drill, but there's a video that I've chosen specifically for you. There's a playlist of my favourites, and there's a cheeky little Patreon link. But honestly, if for, for all the people who get here, have a frigging great day. Bye.